and welcome to episode 28 of the Lonely Knitter podcast. My name is Laura and welcome to my knit night. <laughs> um, this is going to be a bit of a funny episode. So if you are a new viewer, thank you so much for coming and joining me. I hope you enjoy, but um, this isn't how it normally goes. So if you want to go back and look at any of my previous episodes, that has that. Blah, blah. that's how it normally goes um for any returning viewers thank you so much for coming back and i'm gonna get on so uh, it is a saturday night what is going on it is a saturday night and i am recording you know it's bad when i need a lucas aid sport i don't do sport <laughs> anyway um so it is Saturday the 23rd of February and I am just back, as in walked in the door, ate a bit of dinner nice and quickly, put my toddler to bed and sat down at the kitchen table, here I am, um, got back from Unravel Festival. I went there today, it was 174 miles to get there and 190 to get back. The fat map sent me back a different way, but I trust it, it well it's Google Maps so um, I trust it for... Uh, traffic. <laughs> uh, so you can find me here, obviously, where I am right now, <laughs> on YouTube, or on Instagram as The Lonely Knitter, or on Ravelry as The Lonely Knitter 2. And I have no show notes again this week, ah, but it's going to be a quick episode because I barely knit on anything this week, because this, this you may have noticed, this happened. <laughs> so last Sunday, I had just cast on and I was about here so I had done this much because this is neck band so that was extra so from here to like here and I was I had this mad idea that maybe I could finish this throwback by Andrea Maori in a week well less than a week because I wanted it for Unravel today so I cast on on Sunday afternoon and I knit a bit of Sunday evening, but I podcast obviously, so not that much. And then I worked, so I knit a little bit on this Monday morning, but I was uploading, sorting, editing, uploading the podcast while playing with a toddler. And then I um, went to work until half ten at night. So I didn't get a lot of knitting done on Monday. Tuesday, I worked all day. Wednesday, I did work on it quite Mm, no, I didn't because I went to gymnastics in the morning and then we had people around in the afternoon. So, medium amount of working on it, like Wednesday, middle of the day, and then Wednesday evening. And then Thursday, I blasted it out. We had a bit of a house day, did a lot of in the house water playing and play doh playing and things like that. And I just sat next to her on the floor, but with minute and just, and it whizzed. I know last week I talked about. Uh, flicking instead of throwing and I usually am a thrower I went back to throwing with the colour work and then this yarn is very rustic this is very a very woolly yarn and I ended up it just I couldn't tension it right to flick because it was so snaggy it was really wasn't sliding through my fingers easily so I throw I, I did the just standard English knitting for this whole sweater and yeah, went a bit crazy on Thursday, and then Thursday evening, and then Friday morning, and then the next thing you know, it was like 2 o'clock on Friday afternoon, I was at our local, we have Africa Alive, it's like a wildlife park here, and oh I haven't said where I'm coming from, I'm coming from Lowestoft in Suffolk, oh you can tell us bad when I can't remember where I'm from, um, so we went to the wildlife park, and my, I parked next to my friend, and her little boy was sleeping, and I was like, oh, should we get out yet, should we not get out yet? She was like, well, have you, got, have you finished your sweater? And I was like, oh, I've only got this much left to do with my second sleeve. And she was like, well, let's sit for a little while. So I sat and knit the last little bit of rib. So, um, as you can tell, my arms are out. So I'm not sure I want to take this off and get my bingo wings out, but I'm going <laughs> to. Um, so, it is the throwback by Andrea Maori. I followed the pattern completely until it came to the sleeves. With the sleeves, I kind of did my own thing. I picked up, as she said, did the first decrease round, as she said, 
and then changed colour and went into knit for pearl for rib which is the same as down here and I did some decreases as I went here just to nip it in a little bit but it is very simple and very unshaped. I was going to go full length sleeve and I reckon considering when I finished and cast off I probably could have got at least one sleeve maybe both done if I'd have stayed up late on the Friday but this is Let Lopey. I've never worked with Let Lopey before and it is very scratchy <laughs> for me, for me. I might have slightly princess skin but it is it is a tough one when it's not blocked. I have been told by so many people that it's going to really soften up once it's blocked and that would be lovely because I love this but right now and I knew I was going to have to wear it to unravel um, unblocked because I couldn't block it and dry it in time. I really really wanted to wear it and I thought I don't want to wear it with long sleeves and I'm a hot bod in general like I'm a, as you can probably tell I'm a big girl would like to do something about that this year just in terms of health um, but I'm a big girl and I get sweaty if I am bundled up in a ton of wool all the time. Now, 90% of the time, I am running after a two-year-old. I didn't say that at the beginning either. I'm, I live with my husband and my two-year-old. Um, but yeah, if I'm running after my two-year-old, I don't get, I get hot. And I don't want to, I love having my arms out. I'll have my arms out most of the year round. And so I left the house this morning at six, I left my driveway at 20 past six, and this is all I had on. And it was freezing cold and foggy and all sorts. I was so comfy and snuggly. It hasn't aggravated me today as much as I thought it was going to do. Um, it does need to be blocked, which is why I'm very wrinkly up here with these bits. I'm hoping that they will lay flat once blocked and all of this because this is all bumpy. But I was like, I'm not passing up the chance to wear it and have a little look at my floats. I think they're pretty even considering they've not been blocked at all. So, this style of sweater with the colour work very like prominent round here you do feel like I'm quite a broad shouldered woman but I feel like this just makes my um, shoulders stick out even more than they do already um, so I think it makes me look like I have big chunky um, big big chunky shoulders <laughs> but that's fine I'm a big shouldered woman maybe it's not so bad I don't know but I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with my decision to have short sleeves because I think it will make it way more wearable for me throughout the rest of the year. And, you know, if it doesn't soften up, I can tolerate it short sleeved. My wrists and round it, that's where I'm a bit more sensitive. And I think I would be being a pansy about it if I, yeah, I'd be a bit like, <laughs> if it was around my wrists. So I think this is, um, yeah, I'm a precious flower with the scratchy wool. <laughs> Anyway, so that is my only finished object this week, just one this week, because it's a big one. But I finished a garment, you guys, even if it is short sleeve, I don't care. <laughs> so I'm very, very happy with this, and hopefully it will get a lot of wear this year and be a nice addition to my wardrobe. So on to wigs. Um, I have one that is about to be ripped out, and I will tell you why when I get on to Stash Enhancement, but it is the very start of a sock in this gorgeous, gorgeous yarn from Dragon Hill Studio. There's their tag. And it's this amazing cake, and I had looked at these at Waltham Wool Show after I'd spent all my money and didn't have any more to spend on yarn. And um, the fabulous, fabulous Sharon, S-C-R-1-T-N-O, when I sent her my Hexi Puffs, she was amazing and sent me minis and this gorgeous yarn and so I cast it on because I thought I want I want to first of all I love it when people give me something give me something make me something buy me something I want to show them that I'm using it and that I love it so I was like I'm gonna cast them on I'm gonna knit on them today when I actually see Sharon for the first time ah um they're getting ripped out but I'll tell you why in a bit and they're living in this Duckpool Lane sock bag 
And then my other project is in here. Another duck pool laying bag. But um, this one is also a stash enhancement. So this one goes straight into the stash enhancement. This week I received these. This is so vibrant. It does not, I don't think it shows how amazingly vibrant that is on camera. It's messing with my colours. And this orange. So these two yarns are from Terry Dow. Um, of the ungrateful wench i was recommended these by the amazing katie of geordie knits podcast go and watch her if you don't watch her go and watch her and that's her ball band or skein band baby band and it's amazing so you contact her through her facebook group she has a price list you can pick what you want she is incredibly reasonably priced for indie dyed yarn and you tell her what you want, chat to her about colours, whatever. She is so, so um, like easily approachable, really lovely. And, um, and she's really happy to work with you. This one is Colourful, which I asked for. I kept saying, I want a yellow, I want a yellow. And then I went, I don't want that, that one. I know which yellow I want. I want that colourful one, which is this orange. In my head, I knew it was orange, but for some reason I kept saying yellow. She was like, are you sure that's the one you want? I was like, this is the one I want. Yeah, colourful. <laughs> and she sent it me, and I'm so glad she didn't mess with it to <laughs> make it anything else, because it is amazing. There is bits of yellow in there, but it is a gorgeous orange. And then this one, which is still waters. Beautiful tonal blue. So nice. So those two are going together in a colour work project. It is the cowl that I showed you guys the other week, the grey and yellow one. And all I've done is a long tail cast on and then I realised that my na needle was too long. <laughs> so I have a shorter cable for this needle and I will put it on here and carry on. So this was stash enhancement this week and came in the post and it is the softest, softest merino DK. And go and check her out, the ungrateful wench, Terry Dow. She is so well priced, so like good customer service, fabulous. And yeah, living in my duck pool lane bag. So those are my whips. And neither of them are anywhere near, like one of them's getting ripped out and the other one is just has the cast on. But then I went to unravel. So let me talk a bit about budget. To start with now i do not feel that i need to justify myself to anybody everyone spends what they can or cannot afford and um it's their business and i don't feel i don't ever feel that i need to question anybody else on what they spend and i wouldn't expect anyone to question me on what i spend uh, but just for clarification i am i on and i feel like at the moment i might be stacking up like i am stashing for a reason, uh, if there comes a future point where we don't have, and this isn't this isn't something that's in the works right now, but if there comes a future point where we don't have where I don't have a ton of disposable income that I can spend on yarn, I will work from my stash. My stash, my indie dyed stash, had got quite low. Um, it is literally just one cubby in a calyx, and it is only one one layer deep of indie dyed yarn, and I haven't got an amazing array of colour in there, it is all certain colours, and I really, really wanted to add to that and stash a little bit, and I will, and then work from stash for a while, and just see how I feel about working from stash for a while. I knew I was going to unravel, so I set some money aside, and I um, put aside a bit more than I would usually, but put aside some from, um, I, I normally put some aside each month, and I still had the money that I had from last month and I kept it aside. And then this month when I got paid, I get paid four weekly, I kept that money aside. Uh, and I blew it all. <laughs> and I also, uh, I haven't even said about this, oh brain, gone. I released a pattern this week. I released the Show Us Your Scraps, the socks pattern. I will put a picture in here. And um, 
I have had a few people buy it, the pattern, just a few, but those people mean so much to me. So if you fancy heading over to Ravelry and trying out my Shosha Scraps pattern, there is the Shosha Scraps mitts and the Shosha Scraps now the socks. And I'll put a link below if you are interested. That is my first sock pattern to go up on Ravelry, so it's a big deal for me. It's only my second pattern ever to go up on Ravelry. And I um, had the same amount of panic as I did during Vlogmas when I put my mitts pattern up. So, uh, when I, if you watch my Vlogmas, uh, Chris wasn't here, he was at work, and I put my pattern up on Ravelry and proceeded to have a panic attack. Now, panic attacks for me, overwhelming feeling of dread, absolute, just all-consuming feeling of dread. Then I feel like I can't get enough breath. With each breath I'm gasping in, but there's not, I feel like I, there's nothing coming in. And then I get chest pains and think I'm having a heart attack. Now, these are the same panic attacks that I have had since I was about 17, 18, getting steadily worse. And when I was about 17, 18, I used to notice it was like a little chest pain and that was it. And um, then when I was at university, I full on thought I was having a heart attack. <laughs> and um, it doesn't matter that I know it's a panic attack and I know that it's going to go away and I know that nothing's going to happen from it. That does not calm me down. I can't stop it. So this time is a little bit different because Chris was home and I sat on the sofa and I told him how I was feeling and I it might have helped me work through it a little but I still felt like I was going to gonna die I, that's how I feel I feel like I'm gonna die I feel like I am going to not get enough breath in and collapse and the world is going to end <laughs> it's awful and horrible and I went on Instagram posted a picture of my sock pattern and said look this is what I've done and oh my god now I'm struggling and I had a few lovely lovely friends message me and say they felt the same when they've posted their patterns or say like, we know what it's like, you know, we're with you. Like, I had like, four people message me, and I know four might not seem tons to some people who've got a million followers, but I don't have a million followers, and the followers that I have mean a huge amount to me. And so for four people to reach out and say, we get you, like, this isn't anything to feel embarrassed about, this is just something hard that people go through was amazing and I and it really actually helped me go through it and I um, got quite a good night's sleep after that as well which is odd because normally after something like that I don't sleep well so yay <laughs> so if you're interested in the patterns they are out there and um, I had a lot of fun writing them up and I hope you guys have a lot of fun knitting them I am so blown away when I put one up and then I get loads of lovely comments and um, likes on Instagram and it's just a real it's just really lovely. <laughs> so I also had some money from that and I had, because I knew I was going to unravel, I had made up a few project bags and I sold a few of those so I had some money from that. So basically I stashed all my money together and it's more money than I think I have ever spent in on yarn in one go before, ever. But I am incredibly happy with what I have and I spent pretty much every penny. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go through it. The first thing that I got was this Unravel tote bag, and I did not buy this. Funny though, oh, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, it's fine, everyone knows I'm an idiot, but I met the amazing Sharon of the SCR1TNO podcast. If you don't watch her, go and check her out, she is the loveliest lady ever, and we had agreed to meet up. She was so nice. She stayed on the phone with me because I parked. Google Maps sent me to a car park that was like a good few minutes drive away. And I ran to her. I was like, are you here? And she was like, well, by the end of it, we were like, we're not in the same car park. <laughs> so I got back in my car and she stayed like on hands free, obviously, on the phone with me until I had got all the way back round the little town and into the right car park and found me a space. And um, we went in and she had to go in one queue because she already had her ticket and I had to go in another queue because I had bought mine online 
and it was at the little box office table. And I met up with her, and but I was standing in the queue to go in, and there was loads of people collecting their tickets. And one woman said to another, you got your ticket now, right? And she said, yeah, yeah, I got my ticket, got my ticket. And she went, okay, don't forget to pick up your bag. And the woman went, what? Like that. She went, your tote bag. Don't forget to pick up your tote bag when you go in. If you don't want them all to be gone, just show them your ticket and get your tote bag. Like, like the, the way she was saying it was like there was a free tote bag. And the other woman didn't really understand what she was saying either. And I think that's what she was trying to say. So it was like she was saying you get a free tote bag with your ticket. And uh, I got in and there was a pile of tote bags. But I didn't see a price anywhere. But there was loads of people around them, loads of people around this tote bag table. And I was like, maybe it's, I don't know. And then at that exact moment, Charon walks up and hands me a tote bag. <laughs> and um, her and her daughter Katie had both come in and Katie didn't have a tote bag. And Charon did, so I thought, have I got Katie's tote bag? They just hadn't, did she not want hers? Have I, is it a free tote bag? Like that. So I didn't hear there was a free tote bag and it's not, you know, I had, Eight pounds online and a pound of booking fee online for my ticket but if you had paid full price it was a tenner and I don't know if that would include a tip that seems this is very sturdy and I was like thank you and then carried on going and it wasn't until a little bit later on that I was like did you buy this <laughs> she's like yes I was like, so thank you Sharon because by the time I realised, like if she had not bought me this and we'd walked around and she had hers and I didn't have mine, I probably would later on have gone, I want to go and get a tote bag. Well, we walked back past that table later on and it was cleared out. There was not any merchandise left on the table. There was no tote bags left. So, Sharon, you are the only reason that I got a tote bag because when we would have gone back later and I would have been desperate for one and really sad that I'd missed out, well, you saved me from it because you bought me one. So thank you so much, Sharon, for my lovely present. And this is, like, I have a Yarn Forium and a Wolf from Abbey Wall Show tote bag. And they're a different fabric. This is a really, really sturdy, really sturdy fabric, which is good. Because I bought a lot of stuff and put it all in here. <laughs> so I'm going to start just going through it all and I will get through it and then I'll talk more about the day. Because otherwise we're never going to get through it. So first, first thing, let's go chronological. It might not be chronological because I can't remember when I got everything. But the first thing that I know I bought was these. So, remember I showed you this whip with the Dragon Hill Studio yarn? Well, I thought as, we, as they were gonna be there and as we were going to head there first, that I could grab a mini to do matching heels and toes because it already started the cuff and I showed them the yarn I was like oh, I'm knitting this I want matching heels and toes and lady lovely lady grabs all three of these and was like these are all those colours those colours and like showing me the colours in the actual skein and I was like oh, I can't pick I can't pick and then she's like you could get all three and you could do like cuffs heels, toes, and I was like, I've already started though and got a part of a cuff. And she looked at me and she went, I'll give you a free little box of mini eggs if <laughs> you do it. And I went, okay. <laughs> because who doesn't love mini eggs? And I ate them on my way home. But no, it is a brilliant idea. So I got these, and I, I genuinely don't think I could have picked because they are all beautiful, they are all sparkle. And these are Dragon Hill Studio Mini Cake, Sherborne Sparkly Sock four ply, 75% merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina, and they are 25 grams, which is 100 meters. And this one is the turquoise, this one is magenta, and this one is just yellow. So I'm going to rip that sock out, I'm going to pick one colour to be my cuff, one colour to be my toe, and one colour to be my heel, and I'm going to restart these and loop these in there. So I should have a good chunk of each one of these left over because they're 25 grams and I'm only going to use cuffs, heels, toes. So there should be still a lovely little amount left to go in my um, mini scrappy um, vase which needs a few more to top it up. So I'm going to put those straight into there and I'm going to get onto that quite soon. So that's living in my Duckpool Lane sock bag. 
Okay. And the next thing I bought were these Dusty Dimples. We went to Dusty Dimples. I love Dusty Dimples yarn. I got a skein at Yarnporium and it literally was one of the most beautiful things ever. And I actually think it might be quite similar to the other full skein of Dusty Dimples that I bought today because I just love the way she does like pinky, lilac-y, pinky purplies. I love them. I love them all, I'm not going to lie. If I could have bought them all, I would have done. Uh, so, Dusty Dimples, we went there next, and I got these minis, and they are gorgeous. I love that one. I love them all. What's not to love? So, a set of ten. If you're counting, there's only nine in there, because we went outside for a snack and a drink, and I pulled one up straight away on my thumb, and I bought these needles. These Actually, these were the first... No, they weren't. I bought these next. After those minis, I bought these little needles. Um, and they are just, I think they're just bamboo short needles. They're in 3.5mm. And then they have these pretty beads on the end. And then she's just put a little silver blob. <laughs> I don't know. On the end of that. I dropped this one and the little silver blob came off. Sad times. But we found it and it is safe in my notions case and I will hot glue gun that bad boy back on so no worries but I just thought that was so cute and because I was with Sharon and she is queen of the scrappy blankets and queen of cosy memories blankets I cast on a cosy memories square so that is how much I have so far I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I was thinking about it in the car on the way home. I was flinging backwards and forwards. I think it's going to be a one where I make up like a square of like six or eight uh, or twelve and then make another one that's either th not nine or twelve. You know, like so I'm going to make a few little squares. Um, I might buy the, um, this is just a cosy memory square from Kemper Ray from the Coziest Memories blanket. But I might buy the Stitching Time, Kay Jones, Bakery Bear's Stitching Time blanket. I might, I might not, I might just wing it and do whatever. But so yeah, that is my first, and it is beautiful, one of those minis from the Dusty Dimples set. So that was the second thing I bought. So I think we bought those ones. And then, that was later, that was later, that was later, that was last. That was later. These were next. We went to see Amy of Stranded Dye Works. Now I have wanted to meet Amy for a little while. I have not had not got any of her yarn. I just watched her podcast and I have wanted to buy some of her yarn and say hi. And we went. I'll, I'll talk about meeting people at the end. I'll talk about meeting people at the end. So these were the two skeins that I went to her booth and I was like, I'm going to get two skeins. I had done myself a little talking to before this whole mission today, which in which I said, I'm going to buy lots of skeins of stock yarn. Uh, because a lot of the ones I have can be mushed together in shawls. There are a lot of Stephen West patterns I'd love to knit. There's loads of just in general patterns I'd love to knit. Um, so I am fine with pairing up ones from my stash and other ones. And last time I went to a festival I didn't get lots of individual skeins of sock yarn and those are what I want most right now so that's what I went for so I picked these two this one I picked straight away and it is beautiful it is anti-valentine on the 7525 superwash merino nylon fingering weight so this is stranded dye works in the anti-valentine <laughs> colorway it is amazing and then I also at the same time picked up this one it's on the same base and it is the colorway glass slipper and it was between this one and naive watercolor and I held them both up and in the end I just had to go for this one and it is amazing amazing and there are some little pops of like pinky purplies in there and it's lovely. So these two from uh, Stranded Dye Works, and I love them. 
Then we had a break. We had a little yarn break. And then we went back in and I bought this. Sorry for the crinkling. I'll get one out and show you. It is a dark blue. It's a DK. It is really soft. Really soft. Um, and it is, it says on the bag, this is all the details I have. DK wool. 500 grams. It's on the floor now. 500 grams. 16 quid. And I'm a sucker for a bargain. And I went in thinking, I'm just getting single skeins. And then I thought, ooh, I thought, you know what, I can't, if it's wool, if it is actually wool, and I'm pretty sure it is because everything else there was really woolly wool. So I think it came from Win Wensleydale Long Wool. I think that's where we decided we thought it had come from. I might be wrong. But it is this lovely dark blue colour. And I have 500 grams of DK weight yarn. And I want to make myself a garment. Can't be too big a garment. If I was a thinner woman, I would be able to make myself with probably full size something from it. But I am not. And I am accepting of that. So I need to find something not too oversized that can be used. I can use 500 grams of DK for for me. So that's a definite coming up thing and I'm really chuffed with it and then we went to was it then that we looked on the stage we went upstairs we went upstairs and I got these then I got these so these gorgeous minis um, we went up to I'm looking at all the rooms so that I can remember was it the Tyndall studio was it West Green Loft Yarns Sharon would know and because Sharon knows the lady and has had her yarn before and loves it and got some. Spoiler, go and watch Sharon's uh, podcast when she puts it up with what she's got. And she pointed out the minis while I was up there. And so I grabbed these gorgeous minis. And these feel quite chunky. I don't know what they are. Like, they feel quite uh, weighty. I don't know how many grams each one is. So I got a little selection of minis. They look very similar, but they are different. Uh, and I just got these four and I was like, these are incredibly soft and she thinks they might have just been rubbing up against a few others because they were quite, um, there was quite a halo on that end but not on the other end. But they're very, very, very soft so I got these gorgeous minis. Uh, you can tell I've been hanging around with Sharon because I was wanting all the minis. <laughs> and then we went back to Dusty Dimples because I, I was it, I got these and then I got the navy yarn. So we went to Dusty Dimples, back to, back to Dusty Dimples, because I hadn't picked up a full skein, because there were just so many amazing ones that I haven't been able to choose. So I wanted to go back and actually pick one a second time round. Um, so I got In Vino Veritas. I thought it said Ventas, but now because I know In Vino Veritas is a thing, I wonder if that's what it is. I don't know if you guys pick. I don't know. But I got this gorgeous, gorgeous skein. Look at those speckles. And there is sparkle in there, I don't know if you can see it. But I just, I love this so, so much. So it's sparkle sock, 75% uh, superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina. And it's gorgeous. And I don't know if it's that sort of like stellina that can pick up colours or if they've picked it, but that is pink. That stellina is pink right there. There's silver in all this as well, but like where it's really deep dyed, the Selena has gone pink. So yeah, this is Dusty Dimples and it is beautiful. Then, then we went back to the May. No, then we went back downstairs to Stranded because I had got, I hadn't got something the first time round and I was regretting it the entire time. I really wanted a skein of Amy's Flamingo Legs because... I have loved it, I've been watching her podcast for a while and I have loved it every time I've seen it and it's kind of like one of her, I think it's one of her, you know, you would look at that and go, that's flamingo legs and I did. 
and I haven't picked it up because I really like those other two. I was like, just get two, walk away, walk away. Well, I went back because I knew that I would leave feeling like I had missed out if I didn't get it. So I went back and the second time round, Amy was not there, she'd gone on a break. So um, I got to have another chat, my second chat of the day with her lovely mum. And she is quite the saleswoman. Uh, I almost got legless flamingo as well. Um, reined it in, reined it in, because it's near the end of the day, I reined it in. But this is flamingo legs from Stranded Dye Works. This one I treated myself to merino nylon cashmere. So this is, there's 10% cashmere in here. And you can tell, like, like her um, ordinary merino nylon base is very, very soft. But this one just has a little bit of extra, like, squishity squish. But yeah, Flamingo Legs from Stranded Dye Works. Then, we went back into the main, like, Great Hall, I think it's called, because we hadn't gone up in, onto the stage earlier in the day. So, we decided we were going to go up onto the stage. On the way there, we went past Easy Knits. I really like Easy Knits. I have a skein of Easy Knits on my shelf um, from Yarn Porium. I only resisted Easy Knits at... Well, for my wool show, because I'd run out of money. But this time, I grabbed a mini skein set. Because again, Sharon, queen of the mini skeins, I was thinking all about the mini skeins. <laughs> and these are gorgeous. Um, they're the Flamer colorway group, like colorways. They're 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and 520 gram mini skeins. I don't know what they're going to be. I was considering making another pair of Shosha scrap socks just because I've got the pattern out there and I'm like, yay, I want to make another pair. But I think not. I think I'm just going to stash these for a while. So we've got these. And then we went up onto the stage, which show we hadn't been before. And this is not a dyer I have had anything from before or come into contact with before. But this is Dye Dye Done. I'm just going to show you. And these two are gorgeous. And how nice would they be together? I think in a shawl. So dye, dye, done. And this is the Raspberry Sorbet. And this is the Meteorite Colorways. And they were only £15 each. I thought that was a bargain. Um, they are at that one especially absolutely beautiful I saw this one from right across the stage and was like oh straight away knew I wanted to have a look at it and um, they didn't take card they only took cash or PayPal payment on the phone there and then um, so we did that because I did not have cash so that one came straight out of my PayPal and I love them I love them so I got those two and then Last purchase, no, last yarny purchase, I have a few other things. So, last yarny purchase, we walked around the back of the stage, like out in this little corridor bit, there was two more stalls, and one of them had Lay Family Yarn. I love Kelly of Lay Family Yarn, never met her in person, but I think she's fabulous. Um, she sent me the yarn for the show, she got socks, and I've had some of her other gorgeous yarn in the past. Um, I've got one more skein on my shelf and I have one that I knit up last week I think I finished it or was it the week before into a cowl anyway this one I picked this up and then I had it in my hand and was like rifling through the rest of what was in there because there wasn't a huge it was just one little cubby and um cause it wasn't Kelly's stall it was another stall that had loads of different contributors I can't remember who it was so this is Midnight Butterfly from Lay Family Yarn, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it is beautiful. Anyway, I picked this cane up and held it in my hand and rifled through the cubbies with my other hand. Picked another skein out. It's so pretty, it was so nice. Looked at it. Midnight butterfly. I already had it in this hand. And then so I put that one to the side, went for another rifle, pulled up another one. Oh, look at this one to Sharon. Again, exactly the same one. So I pulled out Midnight Butterfly three times because I loved it that much. Maybe that was a sign I should have bought three, all three skeins for like a, 
a garment. But I didn't and now I'm regretting it. But I couldn't afford it. Um, I was done. I was definitely done. So, um, they found me on Midnight Butterfly and my cruddy lighting because I am in my kitchen late at night as always. So, yay. That was my last journey purchase. So, that's all of it. It's all out. Uh, I did buy a couple of other things. The first one being this survival of the knittest. It is a Sue Stratford enamel pin. Now there was not, to my knowledge, an unravel pin. And I have a pin from Yarnporium that says Yarnporium, and I have a pin from Waltham Abbey Wool Show. Um, but I didn't have an unravel one, and I would like to. I can't spend like I have to choose quite often between pins and yarn or project bags. Like I have to pick. Uh, I can't buy them all unfortunately and so I don't have a massive pin stash and I would love a pin stash I love pins so I have resolved to every time I go to a show get a pin or meet someone fabulous I would get their pin so I've also got a sock petition pin so this is my pin for unravel and it will go on my Jilly Makes bag that has my Tanya in that I haven't forgotten about and will be finished at some point <laughs> Uh, and the last thing that I bought was a couple of back issues of Pom Pom Quarterly. Now, I have heard about Pom Pom. I have looked at Pom Pom's website. I really, really, really want the copy. I think it was quite a recent one. With it's a navy blue sweater with the gold, yellowy gold, mustardy gold, yellowy gold, um, moons and stars and um, like constellationy. That one I want that copy they didn't have any copies of that one and you could buy one of the recent copies for £9.50 or you could buy one get one free on the really old ones and I thought well I'm just trying it out I don't have tons of money like I well I don't have tons of money I, I wasn't I was thinking mainly I'd buy yarn so I didn't really want to buy two £9.50 newer ones when I could buy two four £9.50 of the older ones and just see how I felt about it. So it is autumn 2014, so we're talking old old, and spring 2016. And I picked these two because there's only a short few of them that were on this offer. And I really liked some of the patterns, specifically, now I can't find it, this one really like this. I don't think it would probably actually look that good on my body shape but I love it. So that one was the Right Angle by Georgia Farrell. I thought that one was really really lovely. I also don't mind this equi Equilibrium cardigan. So there was a few things in this one that I thought were quite good, but I can't wait to like read the articles. I know they're old, I don't care. I'm absolutely fine with reading old magazines. Um, this one, I loved this tea, but it would look horrendous on me because I'm a bit of a porker, but like, I'm not saying you can't wear it if you're like a, a bigger girl like me, but I do not think that would look flattering on my body shape, but on this woman it looks Stunning. And then, but this one I also really liked, which I think I would just want to make longer, just a little bit, because I'm probably quite busty in comparison. I don't know. I feel like it would need to, and then I need a bit more. I don't. I'm not. I know it's supposed to be cropped. I'd be fine with it being cropped. But I just want a little bit more on there. And then this one, the Wenlock, is just beautiful. So um. There's a few patterns in these that I might consider making. I'm not saying I definitely am going to, but I'm more excited to read some of the articles as well because they look fabulous. And just, I'm wondering if I might want to collect these at some point. I don't know. I, I love, these are, they're smaller than I thought they would be, but they're so good quality. They feel like a book. So they don't feel like a magazine, like all the tatty old these of let's knit that I used to have and these feel like a totally different league and like a proper knitting book and I really like them so 
I might be asking for a subscription for my birthday. You never know. So that is everything, absolutely everything that I bought today at Unravel Festival. So now I'm just going to have a little chat about how um, it went and what went on and things like that. There isn't really much to talk about from this week because I haven't done an awful lot. Um, not a lot of magicalness has gone on apart from we got a new sofa on Tuesday night. And our, our mind had broken, I think I said that about that last week. And our friends were getting rid of theirs and then they had to get rid of theirs a lot quicker than they thought they would. And so we bought it from them. Um, very cheaply they gave us a very good deal and so uh, it's very comfy and very lovely and I love it a lot. So that's the only thing that's happened other than unraveling this week so I'm just going to talk about unravel. So I knew I was going to meet up with Sharon, I had hoped to meet up with a few other people, I did meet some of them, didn't meet some of the others. Uh, totally missed Gemma from the project bag, would have loved to have met her, she said she was going to come down in the afternoon but I just didn't spot her. Uh, did meet Amy of Stranded, might have done a total fangirl. All of this was with Sharon. I hung out with Sharon all day, we chatted to people all day. She was my courage. I'm a big fat chicken, totally, like get really nervous talking up to strangers. Not strangers, but like people on the internet who don't know who I am and I'm like, I have to go up and introduce myself and oh, what if they just think, go away? <laughs> so um, I was very nervous, but Sharon was very courageous and she, what she did meant that I actually spoke to these people, which I was not going to do because I was really, really going to check it out. So, um, Amy from Stranded, I had wanted to meet her for a while. I was like, oh, I like her. <laughs> um, I don't know her. I just see what she puts on her, um, on her podcast. But then I suppose we're all like that, really. And I think I'm exactly like this in real life. As I, like as I am on my camera in my kitchen, as I am in real life, so why would other people not be? And Amy was exactly like she is on her podcast. She was so friendly. I met her, said how much I loved her podcast, and she gave me a hug. <laughs> then I gave her a four pack of Diet Coke, because I'm a weird fangirl who does stuff like that. <laughs> and then she gave me another hug. <laughs> um, so she was absolutely lovely, and I got some of her gorgeous yarn. And then I saw her later on in the day when uh, my lovely Sharon was incredibly brave and we saw Amy and Ellie of Game Deer fame and they were sat having a chat and a little break and then they said goodbye to the person they were chatting to and were, looked like they were getting ready to move and Sharon said let's go because Sharon is like me and loves Amy and Game Deer Ellie and um, really wanted to go and say hi so we went over and said hi and they were both very nice and had a little chat with us. Um, yeah, just, just in general everyone was lovely, it was so nice to walk into such a lovely welcoming environment. We had a little moment, me and Sharon, with her camera where we were stacking up the things we were buying and there was women at this other table near us just dying of laughter, stacking up our things. And um, yeah, it was just really friendly and lovely. I grabbed Carly as she walked past. Um, you may know her as Balula on Instagram and she has a, I think she's my creative daydream on um, YouTube. I watched her vlog best and then that has evolved into a podcast. So um, I said hi to her. I was very brave and just went, Carly! <laughs> and then kudos to my brain saying her name and not Balula. <laughs> <laughs> which is the second thing that came into my brain because that's her Instagram name. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I just, I, um, a few other people. Um, Sharon knows way more people than I do. Who else did? Oh, I saw Dundonit Caroline. Big fangirl moment. She was walking outside the marquee or I was sat in the marquee having a drink. I saw, I went, Done, done it straight away to um to Sharon. I was just like done, done it. <laughs> she was outside. She didn't hear me. I didn't sound like some crazy person pointing and shouting names at people. But yeah, had a slight fangirl moment when I um I saw Caroline, but I didn't see her back in. That was when we were pretty much done, and I was like, I don't really want to go in there and hunt her down because that's when it starts to get weird, and I don't want to be that person. 
Um, and I had uh, a couple of people come up to me and yeah. So Ellen Ellenus Crafts, I found you. <laughs> um, came up to me and said hi, and it was so lovely to have someone who watched my podcast actually come up and say hi because it makes me feel like I'm not just sat behind my camera and it's not real life because it is real life and um, this process is making me feel really included in a like community when before I felt like the oddball on the outside of my little real life like or in person life group and that I had no one like me now I feel like there are a lot of people like me <laughs> um, so it is really really lovely and obviously I saw Sally, um, who I met at Waltham Abbey Wall Show and all her friends and they were absolutely lovely too and sat with us for a drink and a snack. And um, I took a few little goodie bags, like party bags. I don't know, I was thinking about it, I'd been given little things at other shows before, or one other show before, and I took a few stitch markers when I went to Waltham Abbey Wall Show and I really enjoyed just giving them out and um, I thought I would do the same. So I have loads of these little stripy sweetie bags left over from our wedding. So just grabbed a few in. I think I grabbed nine, nine, so not tons, but also not none. Like I only took like five sets of stitch markers to Waltham Abbey. Um, so I took nine little bags and I had some sweeties and I just put a few little sweets in each bag and a mini in each bag. Um, out of my vase of minis and just gave them out to a few people whoever I chatted with or anyone that said hi to me or I forced one on um, Amy, Stranded Amy and uh, Skane Dear Ellie <laughs> and yeah just gave them out because it was just nice to share I just I felt like I wanted to say like thank you for letting me be part of this community thank you for everyone who spend a little bit of time talking to me whether it's because you knew who I was or because I knew who you were and obviously there aren't that many people who know who I am because I'm not a big person but um the people who are bigger people who knew who I like who knew not who knew I was who wanted to actually say hi and talk to me when I came up to them was like can I talk to you um I'm so grateful for that because people don't have to be that way in person they don't have to talk to you they don't have to give you any time and um that little act makes me feel incredibly included so it was nice to just take something as a little thank you and they were very little very little thank yous so yeah that was about it it was 174 miles to get there and 190 to get back and it was worth every minute it took me I was probably in the car overall throughout the day for about seven hours it took me three and a quarter hours to get there this morning and a bit more than that to get back because I got stuck in traffic at one point and also went the wrong way at one point um so about seven hours total round trip and it was worth it it was really worth it um I listened to The Coming by Michelle Obama because I don't get a ton of time to sit with my headphones in I wouldn't put my headphones in and listen to something when I am being a mum during the day because my two year old, uh, first of all she would get up to all sorts if I couldn't hear, see and know what she is doing at all times. But secondly, um, everything she has to say is incredibly important to me. <laughs> so um, I want to hear it all. So yeah, so I don't get to listen to that audiobook as much as I would like to and I got a full seven hours of it today and it was glorious I am marching on through I'm not 100% sure how far I am through but I am I'm past I'm past the bit where Barack is president or has become president so we're cracking through her life quite a bit and it is fabulous so yes that was pretty much everything that's happened to me this week as I am podcasting a little bit early this week, Saturday night instead of Sunday night. It might well go up tonight or it might go up tomorrow morning, I'm not sure, but whichever is fine. Uh, it's still gonna be earlier in terms of me recording to when I'm recording next week and I probably will record on Sunday next week as usual, which means hopefully I'll have a whole extra day of knitting cracked in there. 
There is a bunch of projects I want to do now. There are loads of things I've got started and in my brain. I need to cast that flax on this week because that is a gift for someone and I wanted to be included in the flax along. Run by Georgie Nitz. I have watched a ton of podcasts this week. I have not got show notes, so I can't remember who they all were, but I definitely watched the Georgie Nitz episode. If you do not watch Katie of the Georgie Nitz podcast, you need to get yourself over there. She's got the flax along going on. I'm knitting another flax. Why don't you? <laughs> um, she is my knitting bestie and she is brilliant. She also has the Solidarity Swap going on. She is one of the organisers of the Solidarity Swap. Brainchild of Time Swedish over on Instagram. If you fancy an amazing looking swap that would fit anyone's budget, because it is um, a very, it is an inclusivity swap. So if you can't afford right now, to join in but you still wish you could then go over there and see what's going on because there is an option for you too um yes go and check out Katie I know I watched hers and um as always go and check out SCR1TNO that is Sharon she will have a clip um from the show today uh, it might be a bit dis I might look a bit ooh, I was high on wool fumes totally high on wool fumes um, I had an amazing time with Sharon and her lovely daughter Katie and today was made from the, them two totally made it for me because I hadn't had them two to go with and hang out with and chat with and laugh with um, I probably would have been gone within a couple of hours and considering it took me so many hours to get there that would have been sad <laughs> Um, no, because they were there, I just had, I, I think if I had been on my own, probably would have done one whole lap of Marketplace, might have nipped back into a couple of places and then gone. But because I was there with them, I really took my time, uh, got to take my time at looking at everything, sat down, had a little rest break, food, drink, and then went back in, came back out, had another little rest break, and then then went. So it was so, so, so um worth it to spend the time with them because they made it for me completely and uh, yeah I just had a fabulous time and this is why I love our community um, I know we've had a lot of talk about change much needed change in our community recently and I totally think that that needs to happen and I think that it should be ongoing and I'm glad to have seen those changes um, but today did remind me that there is a lot of love in our community as well and whilst we do need a lot of change and we do need to work a lot everyone needs to do a little bit of work I think um, I, or at least I do I know I do um, and I have been doing but I just I really um, I felt the love today just of nice people or people being nice because yeah people people being nice today was lovely to me they were lovely to me so my experience today was lovely and I really really hope that other people had that as like a similar experience in in that way um yeah it was a fabulous fabulous day and i need to say thank you really to the wonderful people that bought my uh, project bags that i put up for sale and bought my pattern because um when i made my paypal payment i paid by paypal for these two that came direct out of that money and one of the main things that I really really wanted to do was I wanted my hobby to fund my hobby in some way because I don't have a ton of disposable income I only work part-time and I don't work in a very well-paid job but this is my only hobby this is my only thing I don't drink um, alcohol I don't smoke I'm boring <laughs> I don't go out um, unless it is to a toddler event and I don't have any um, mates that I would go out on a night out with that often like they'd all come here and we'd have a takeaway like but we're not um, I'm not a big spender when it comes to anything other than this hobby and so I loved the idea that maybe I could fund a bit more of this hobby in my life but also um, when I say fund it what I want to do is if I can write patterns which I love to do if I can make project bags which I actually hate to do um, if I can do those things um, and make money from that I would love to then put that money back into the community so buying from indie dyers buying from um, independent bag makers that is something that is I would love to do I want to contribute to the community just as much as I want to benefit from it and if you see what I mean 
um, I would love it if I could live off a designing career, but can't see it happening to me anytime soon. <laughs> but yeah, so um, these two, when I paid for these through PayPal, that felt like a massive big deal. Anyway, as you can see, I have a massive amount of yarn here. Let's wrap it up, Laura. Let's wrap it up. Um, I am not going to be buy buying yarn for just a little while. I really want a lay family on advent calendar. If I want one, I need to make some money and fast because they are going to be up for sale soon. <laughs> and uh, I don't have the money for one right now. But I really want them. And I also really um have stashified myself this today and I will want to work through these yarns eventually. Um I I just had a really good time buying from someone in person. I love buying online, I love supporting independent makers. Buying from someone on in person when there's all this yarn in front of me, it's like some sort of like it's like drugs. It's like fumes from the yarn make me buy more. <laughs> um that is creepy, I realise that's creepy. Anyway. So if you have got this far all the way through till past an hour of me talking about yarn, then thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Remember, we do have a giveaway going on last week's episode. So if you go back to last week's episode, you'll see all the details there. And I will be drawing for that next week. So get your entries in if you would like a chance. Um, that is for this little Winnie the Pooh. Um, sock bucket, a skein of opal sock yarn, and the book Socked First by Alice Yu. So those are up on my previous episode. And um, thank you so, so much if you've got all this way through. Um, if you want to give me a thumbs up, I would love it. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, you will get notifications of future videos. And all the likes, all the subscribes will um, sort of signal boost my little tiny podcast. And um, get it out to more people so I can make more knitting friends. So if you fancy it, I would love that. I'm going to block my sweater.